Why do you believe that things like racism or sexism are wrong? All right, that's a tough one. Um, I think that, all right, well, uh, why do I believe that things like racism and sexism are wrong? In our 21st century culture, postmodernism, the idea that all truth is equally valid, rules the day. We see it everywhere from Twitter to talk shows. It's especially prevalent on campus. Let's say um, I really wholeheartedly thought that that trash can was God. If I believed it's true, you would agree with me? It's your belief. I mean, it has nothing to do with me, so yeah. This relativistic thinking ultimately leads to hopelessness. We see this with the record numbers of people struggling with depression and for some, even suicide. Have you ever felt or experienced anxiety or depression? In um, phases, yes. I experienced some depression earlier in the year. Uh, most definitely anxiety. I would get like this really bad like butterfly feeling in my stomach. Have you known anyone in your life who's committed suicide? I do, actually. The truth is, for people that believe that life has no transcendent value, the absolute correct response is depression. It's important, first of all, to understand why people see the world the way they see the world. And so when we talk about worldview, yes, it can quickly become a bit of an esoteric discussion about philosophers and philosophical systems. But really, we're asking a bigger question about why do people act the way they do? Why do they see the world the way they see the world? Oftentimes, it's easy for people in Western society to just kind of go with the flow. It's like, well, this is what everybody believes. But to stop and take stock of why do I believe this? Why do you believe that things like racism or sexism are wrong? <sighs> All right, that's a tough one. Um, I think that... All right, well... Uh... People look to reason and to science to answer their questions about why things work the way they work in the universe. Going even back to the Enlightenment, we have another movement called Romanticism, which taught people that the pursuit of their own happiness was their chief end in life. And so you take those two things, you combine them together, you really get an explanation philosophically for where people are coming from. There is no absolute truth, that's postmodernism. Who determines what truth is? You do. When it comes to understanding the natural universe, reason and science give us everything we need. That's modernism or naturalism. What is love and how do you describe that? A series of chemical reactions that creates and guides humans to mate and reproduce. It's an evolutionary thing. And the goal of my life is to please myself. That's romanticism. What do you think the purpose of life is? To be happy your personal happiness. So you have a combination of those three worldviews that make up the popular philosophy that most people live their lives by. They may or may not give lip service to some sort of deity. I think that religion shouldn't be necessary for people to be ethical, but I think it can help and I think it can be a good guide. But in the end, they're convinced based on those philosophical worldviews that they don't really need God because science and reason gives them all the information they need. Postmodernism allows them to put a bubble around themselves and insulate their own presuppositions. And then romanticism gives them the purpose for life, to please myself. This discussion is exceptionally important when it comes to the issue of hope and hopelessness. For those in a secular worldview, from their perspective, this life is all there is. There is nothing beyond natural selection, random chance. There is no eternity. What I do in this life is ultimately meaningless, except to try and make myself happy. And when I realize I can't do that and I come to the end of it all, then there's nothing to live for. What do you think happens to people when they die? I don't believe anything happens. I think it just goes dark. And so the reason this matters is it's not just a academic discussion about philosophical systems. What it really is, is a discussion about eternal matters where eternity itself is at stake. It doesn't really matter if you like vanilla ice cream and I like chocolate ice cream. These are non-consequential preference issues. However, when we're talking about life and truth, 
eternity is on the line. Up next, we take a look at the truth of the Christian faith and the hope that it has for a postmodern worldview, and maybe even for you. What's up guys? Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Next week we got more content coming at you, so make sure you subscribe.